Sunday Papers Podcast show with Greg and Mike Sunday Papers sorts it out Sunday Papers Podcast show with Greg and Mike and it's Jesse James in the news. Is today Saturday? Hold on. It's Sunday on. papers. Headphones in. Okay. Headphones are in. Oh, we got a clap in. I just in. joined the podcast. Clap in. One. Oh. Two. Three. Wait. That hold on. Do that clap. again. I just, go ahead. Oh, my God. This is, oh, it's borderline. It's not borderline. It's just says three, two, one. Ugh. Nice. Real right. nice. Real classy, Mike. Are you? Oh, wow. All right. So you did the screaming already. Right. You're not going to do it again. Read all about it. Read oh. all about it. There it is. With enthusiasm. Let's go. I can't get more criticism. People commented I was down last week. How dare they? Do you How have any dare? explanations for that? Do you want to address that in any way? I was down last week. Um, my energy was down, but uh-huh. how dare they call me out on that? Listen, I go to work for about two and a half hours a week. Yeah. They don't know what I'm going through. That's right. It's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. Um, but I'm here. You, we're going to nail this. You were on the this. road. You were away. Uh, you're back in the closet. You got your energy back. Yes. This is like, uh, Samson's hair. This is what I need. This is what I need around me to feel strong. Right. I'm this talking is- into the mic this week cause it's on a stand. Uh huh. Yeah. I have uh, the energy of like an Adam Levine. I have like, I, I'm going to go above and beyond. I have Whatever. never been a fan. What is it? Maroon five. Are we all supposed to pretend Maroon five is a good band now? Just because, and, and then, no. and then his fucking what? What does he go on? Uh, the Voice or America's Got? To, he's, he's always on some reality show. He's a fucking sellout commercial piece of shit. Fuck he's Adam the Levine. biggest. Do, he's a walking Hollywood douchebag. He went to Brentwood High School. Uh, someone took the picture of him with all his tats and goes, "Oh my God! It just occurred to me. He's a human Chipotle bag." <laughs> And they put a Chipotle bag with all the writing all over it, and it looked so similar to his torso. Yeah, and he, you know, he he's a big golfer. He plays he plays at a country club my friend belongs to. And, perfect, uh, perfect. Yeah. Yep, yep. Ne- every neck song tattoos and a country club that makes sense. Every song is so begging you to like it, like it's so. There's yeah. no art there every song seems calculated and then when he did the halftime so my girls were young and you know he was you know the darling of uh the voice and they watched the voice and they loved him and the halftime i'm like i i can't i can't do it i can't even do it and the best was his halftime show orchestrated and blocked for him to like rip off his shirt in the last song and it was widely viewed as the worst halftime show ever for the yeah, Super Bowl. That's right. And now he's in the news. Wait, I was so got, vindicated. We have this in the script somewhere. He's in the news because did Denman put this in the script? Yeah, we'll get to it later, I guess. Right, yeah, we'll get to he's it later. a little teaser. That's a, Mike Gibbons with his producing hat on. We're gonna long tease. tease. It. It's called the deep tease. Deep tease. Deep tease. Want a deeper tease? Yeah. Dilbert. Dilbert. That guy's getting. F- canceled from all these newspapers he's going down yeah and he claims it's because he, he he went anti-woke that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go anti-woke and then that will somehow explain the failure of my career i was kind of anti-woke energy wise last week you that's one way to say yeah. it yes anti-awake <laughs> <laughs> i'm a little slow <laughs> off the mark uh partied with gubbins last night oh boy we'll get to that Deep tease. Deep tease. That'll That's... be in three podcasts. So tune in uh, in October and you'll hear that story. Um, my wife got her booster shot. My wife, your internet sucks, dude. No. Yes. Your new giant mechanism that you have there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you You've, you're frozen. I haven't seen your mouth move in about a minute. All right. Have you? Are you plugged in? Are you hardwired, hardlined? I'm not hardlined. Oh, why even... Get That's the what stuff. I gotta, do. I gotta get hard lined. You buy uh, didn't we order you the adapter? Didn't you order it like on the show? Yeah. Yeah, but then I, I don't have an Ethernet cord that's long enough to reach though. 
I do. I have really long ones. Oh, really? Yeah, because I would like, I think I'd bring my Apple TV outside. on like, for, for whatever reason, I have some incredibly long ones. You don't even need them that long. Okay. I'm going to get one, and I'm going to hardwire next week. Yeah. All right. Erin uh, got her booster. No problem. She got in and out. The last time when she got her first two shots, she was laid out on the bathroom floor, like burning with fever, sick for two days, and this uh, this recent booster shot, nothing at all, just a sore arm. She's um, works with infants, literally newborns, she so it. there's a very good reason for her to be ahead of this. We don't have to justify that my wife got a booster shot. You're supposed to get your booster shot. That's what you do. It, yeah, it, I, read, yeah. I read a study this past week that's trying to look at the controlled uh, population that has had no vaccines. Yeah. And um, it's very hard to tease out the data. But uh, it's anyway. But and also I forget what publication put it, but it'll be interesting to see how effective they are. Yeah. Well, I'm all for I'll take any vaccine. Monkey pox. Uh, what's the new one they're doing now? Well, the turkey should get vaccinated about the bird oh, flu. Yeah. Deep Another tease. deep tease. Deep Another tease. deep tease. Lot, we got a lot coming in this episode. Um, the deep tease episode. Yeah. The deep um, tease podcast. That's a good podcast name. What's going on with, uh, Olivia? Oh, all right. I kind of, uh, I, I don't even know if I should tell Come this, on, but it, tell it. okay. It was kind of so funny. So. She comes up to me and she's like, I think I have a stalker. And it's actually serious. And I go, what? And she goes, I think the, I won't mention what, but, but someone who works in this building, I think my, and I'm like, wait, why? And she's really, really rattled actually. And I'm like, what? She's like, well, I saw him, uh, like in my school. She's like, I even took pictures. Like he was parked in front of me. She goes to school three miles from here, you know, like three not. Three blocks from here. What? Like three miles, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. like, like oh, maybe two miles, right, as the crow flies. And so she's like, and I've seen him, and I've seen him, like, around and all this. I'm like, well, he's not a very good stalker if that's what's going on, you know. And I, and I actually am not trying to be funny. I was trying to help her. So anyway, that went on. She's very, very rattled. I went and asked the guy, so she really wanted me to do this. So just kind of to send a message, I pretended, you know, that there was some issue, friendly, and then and then when it was ending, friendly, I was just like, oh, I go, you know, my my daughter sees you, you know, around where she goes to school. Do you like live or work up in that area? You know, live in that area or have another gig up in that area? And he's like, uh, oh, where, blah blah blah. Any any mention, he goes, he gets lunch there. But it was kind of one of those like. We now know, like, that's what Olivia wanted, like, in case something were. Anyway, that's not why I tell the story. I tell the story because she's incredibly upset the first night, you know, now she's fine, and really, really rattled. And she goes, I just want to take my mind off that I'm going to watch something. I'm like, yeah, why don't we? I go, why don't we? And she, keep in mind, like, she, has, she was just crying. And I go, yeah, why don't we find something light to watch? She's like, no, no, I'm just going to keep watching Murders in the Building. <laughs> That sounds like a terrible made-up joke. That's literally what happened. Did she laugh when she said she, it? She, I go, what? And she goes, oh, my God. Like, she, and she said, I knew it was funny because it was, like, dark. She goes, I didn't put together how literal, how literal it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I remember when my dad died, um, We, my mom worked at the New York Times at the time, and she worked with your stepbrother's father, yes. Peter Nichols, Yep. who also worked at the New York Times. And his job at the time was he reviewed uh, movies once they were released on DVD. Or, yeah. or, or at the time, it was actually VHS. And so he had a crush on my mom, and he used to always give my mom... Uh, uh, videos to bring home that she could watch. So my father dies. We do the, you know, his full Irish wake thing. You were there. You know, it was like yeah. three days of wakes and then a big Irish Catholic funeral and then the lunch. So anyway, we get back to the house and we're fucking exhausted. Me, my brother, my sister, my mother. And we go into the family room and we just fall down on the couch and we say, all right, let's watch a movie. Let's take a look at uh, 
Let, let's take a look at the movies down here. We'll pick one. So I'm going through the movies, and I pick out a title, and it said, uh, d- the title is Daddy's Dead, Who's Got the Will? <laughs> <laughs> and we watched it, and it was a pretty good movie. <laughs> I can't believe you guys put that movie on. <laughs> yes. That is a dark group of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have an overheard from the golf course this week. Really? Yeah. So the overheard was me sitting next to you, and I heard you. And we were getting coffee after playing, and they were right by the first tee. And this is what you said. Um, look at those, look at those guys. And two of them are wearing cargo shorts. Pause. But I hear those are actually coming back in. <laughs> Just a completely <laughs> dumb conversation you're having with yourself about cargo shorts and you being under the impression you hear they're coming back in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At first I judged them and then I realized they were ahead of me. They were they were more fashion forward than I was. Um, the other thing I put up top here, I just put but it I last night. I think what night. that was, yeah. was I think fashion caught back up to those guys. I don't think they stopped wearing cargo shorts in the late eighties. I think they just pushed straight through and fashion came back and met up with them on the second lap. Oh, that happens so many times. Like yeah. my stepfather's like unhip jeans or whatever. And Olivia's obsessed with them. And so they, it's, it's a joke in the family. He on her birthday, like gave her like some of his jeans and stuff because they're like they're kind of like nerdy or maybe dark uh, whatever yeah, yeah. it is whatever it is you know jeans go in and out from light to dark and anyway right. and i guess skinny to straight or whatever yeah um what else did i have in here oh when i was looking you know it was a slow news week for the podcast purposes because you know whatever the politics is absolutely crazy now but anyway a late a last minute, it happened yesterday, but Nurse Ratchet uh, died. Oh, that's right. I saw that. Yeah. Um, and as listeners of the podcast know, I mean, she won the Academy Award. Um, why don't I do her respect and put up her? Uh, but anyway, it's an opportunity. If you guys have not seen uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, I mean, I guess now is the time because you will see her Oscar winning performance um she's incredible oh look she has her own wikipedia page i'm talking about nurse ratchet does um well you know there's so a great. fucking really good tv show i think it was kate blanchett louise fletcher when she was 88 sorry go ahead kate blanchett oh I, she oh kate they did blanchett? a continuation of it yeah there was a tv series that was really fucking wait it wasn't kate blanchett it was um God damn it. I can't remember her name. Uh, really good. Really good. Oh, okay. And, you know, it's so funny. Like, you know, when I was little and saw this movie, I've been blown away every time I've seen it. I've probably seen it three times. And she was pure evil and uh, and was, I just wanted to kill her so badly. And, um, and when I watched it when I got older, I'm like, you know, this movie was pretty smart. Like, Yes, unbelievably manipulative, and yes, evil, okay, evil. But it wasn't as cut and dry. It wasn't as black and white. Um, it was more nuanced. Like, there was also a system, you know? There was a, yeah. there was a system that was incredibly broken, and she was part of it, you know? Right, and right. And the movie was smart about showing that. Um, yeah, and the TV show picked up on that. It was, it, it, she was not a complete villain. She was just, uh, yeah. Yeah. But boy, is she a delicious character to hate? Like just watch it. If you have nothing to do tonight, uh, watch it. Now we're going to pretend it's Sunday, even though we're doing this on Saturday. Are we going to Bowie tonight? Uh, tomorrow night. Yeah. Sunday night. Remember Uh, we're pretending it's Sunday. Yeah. 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 Yes. I think we are. Uh, let's do it. Um, by the way, slow news week. What about, there's a guy named Adam Bean who we have to give a shout out to. He sends us uh, great story leads every week. And I forwarded you a dozen. And I don't think you put any of them in the script. I felt somewhere last week. Um, 
And then there was the guy, he was very, hey, listen, it's awesome that he sends that stuff in and thank you. Uh, one was about the guy, fat, whatever, who was arrested in Mexico, I believe. Right. And it's a funny name, but I, I don't know. You know, sometimes funny stories, unless it's Florida, uh, like they're already funny. I, I don't know. There's something you, you know. About- I put a joke on a joke, as they say in the comedy writing rooms. Yeah, gilding the lily type thing. So anyway, um, sometimes. But I did look into that. What was the fat story? Um, we can do this. We'll give them a little shout out. This is great. It's. I mean, listen. Anyone who even listens to this thing, uh, here we go. So uh, Adam sent in. This escaped international criminal, Fat Leonard. Um, and I went on the story, but does does um, Adam send it in Google Docs? There was some, I, I yeah, had to like... Yeah, it's in Google Docs. Yeah. So I'm not going to go in Adam's Google Docs. I don't know what's there. And uh, anyway, so I looked up the story on uh, this guy, Fat Leonard, myself, and... Um, it is a funny name, uh, and the guy escaped. I, and I don't remember much more than that, but whoa, ew, unrelated. But this is a like criminal, an international criminal, and he escaped and all that. And then someone sent us this week, the kid who was found dead here in Los Angeles, or the guy who was found dead, who what was guy? a witness. He was a witness. Oh, in a, yeah. I, why did that not get in the mainstream news? That was like... I don't Slid know what's the going radar. on there. There's a guy who is a federal witness against Trump, and he suddenly is found dead at a high school or something. Yeah. Uh, and and, it's not, and it's a not while getting after he went missing. Yeah. Hold on here. All right. This this podcast is really stalling out. Let's get to it. He's an informant found dead on a high school camp. A federal informant. Yes. Who, who was informing on uh, Trump-related issues. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, let's get to what it. What do you mean? I think this is this the strongest start to any podcast we've ever done. Go ahead. Bruce Wise uh, sent in a very cool logo this week. I love it. It looks like yeah. uh, it looks like a Spaghetti Western kind of a situation. Thank you, Bruce. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Uh, the song from Jim Tripp. Mm. What did you think of that song? I I told you when I heard it, I don't know even how to categorize that thing. It almost starts like a, like, you know, the blues where you're singing along with your exact guitar notes. And then it yeah. then it grew into something different than that. Yeah, it's trippy. And his name is Jim Tripp. So there you go. Uh, I loved it. Corrections. We have None. Uh, Eric from Duluth, Minnesota said. Uh, House of Dragon is actually fucking amazing. Correct yourself, Gregors. Oh, all right. I'm going to give it a try. I'm letting some of them accumulate. I don't know. I've, I've seen all of them, and I am not on board. It just keep waiting for something to happen. Oh, boy. All right. Kind of like the oh, listeners of this Eric podcast. Duluth, Minnesota. No, this is Eric from Duluth, Minnesota. Not to be nitpicky, but the Minnesota Vikings are purple oh, and gold. No, I know. I tried to give you-, you an out last week. And the University of Minnesota mm. Gophers are maroon and gold, but yes, both are great combinations. Uh, so you're wearing your Gopher colors today, uh, and on the golf course, you took off your maroon sweatshirt to reveal a maroon shirt under it. I believe you might have bought me both those things for my birthday this year. So I buy fault. good gifts. I buy good gifts. Uh, Rick Schwartz said it's chloroform, not chlorophyll, that knocks you out. Oh, chlorophyll is what makes grass green, I think. Um, uh, also, the, green. also, the Vikings colors are purple and gold. Maroon and yellow are Boston College's team colors. And I agree, maroon is a beautiful color. Also, a PC way for Bugs Bunny to call Elmer Fudd and others a moron behind their backs. I bet if I put chlorophyll on a handkerchief, I could get some lady in my van. Oh, sure. And she'd have grass stains all over her mouth. Yeah. Her tongue would turn green or something like that, maybe. But I mean, with enough effort, that's all I need on the handkerchief. I mean, you can really. Handkerchief. If you push down hard enough, it doesn't matter what's on that handkerchief. I find, I mean, there there is like a trove of beautiful women that keep walking outside my office window. So sorry. Podcast fans, they found out out where the headquarters is. Oh. 
Yeah. Did I ever tell you about, I mean, speaking of, I had this guy come by one day. This story got and worse. He knocked, he knocked on my door of my office. Yeah. And my office is completely indiscriminate. Like, there's no, my name's not on the door, whatever. And, he might uh, have just walked around uh, with a laptop and found the weakest Wi-Fi signal. Maybe that's how he found your office. <laughs> And uh, yeah. I think I knocks on the door and I open it up and he's got a box full of old porno magazines that he wants to give me as a gift. And he's like stuttering. He's so nervous because he's a big fan of the show. And I and I and I and I did I didn't even ask him how he found me, but he it was fucking weird. Wow. Yeah. But you thanked him profu profusely and didn't go home that night from the office. Well, look, I got to know him because jerking off with a guy is really a, a bond that you don't forget quickly. <laughs> uh, this you, week, write, you write them a thank you? Like, uh, listen, thanks anyway, but they were not gently used as you described. <laughs> I was gently used after I looked at them for about an hour. Uh, I will be going to Austin this week. I'm going to uh, do some podcasts out there. I'm promoting... Yeah, you dates. are. I'll be on Rogan. I'll be on uh, Two Bears, One Cave with Segura. I'll be on nice. Tommy Hitchcliffe's podcast. And then I come back Friday and do Corolla's podcast. All so I can promote. No, not all. I do it because I love seeing those guys. But also I'll be promoting my fall dates. I will be in New Orleans on October 6th at the Howlin' Wolf. Lafayette, Louisiana the next night. Chicago, October 15th at the Den Theater. San Francisco Punchline, November 3rd through the 5th. Oklahoma City, November yeah. 16th. Tampa, November 17th through 19th. If it's then, still there, deep oh, tease, hurricane right. coming to Tampa Tuesday. Yes. All right, talk about hyenas. And then uh, hyenas in, actually, in Dallas, actually Fort Worth. Dallas, Fort Worth, right? Uh. Fort Worth. Um, Mike, we are excited about this week's ad. Uh, we, we are. We both got samples of this food from Factor. It's called Factor. I didn't know what hit me, man. Box showed up. I'm like, are you sure it's for me? And it was. And I immediately went to work eating. Here's the and thing about frozen dinners. And I and I wouldn't call it. They used to be called frozen dinners. Is the quality was awful. But the idea of microwaving your dinner and having it is so appealing. Well, all of a sudden, fa uh, Factors comes along. And this is like gourmet. It's so good. And, yep. and it takes two minutes. Never two frozen. Minutes. Uh, what's that? I had to figure that out. When the box came, I opened it, and I was like, all right, am I supposed to throw these in the freezer? And then there you read, do not. They're never frozen. Right. They're fresh meals, and they take two minutes yeah. in the microwave. Right. And they're really good. Olivia and I ate them this week. What was your favorite? Uh, there was a chicken with macaroni that yeah. was so good. And then um, they had a, they had a shrimp, they had a shrimp and grits one. I ate one. the shrimp one. Yeah. Shrimp and grits was really good. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it's, it factors out to be cheaper than takeout. So it's kind of a no brainer. Yep. Um, if you, uh, always comes with vegetables. They've it's got great. keto options, calorie smart, vegan and veggie protein plus, um, they save time. They save money. I, we don't know what to tell you. It's chef crafted recipes packed with restaurant quality flavor. I can't believe it's dietitian approved. So head to go.factor75.com slash box. Wait, hold on. This is complicated. Head to go.factor75.com slash Papers 130, the number 130, and use code PAPERS130 to get $130 off across six boxes. Yes. That's, that's code PAPERS130 at go.factor75.com. Are we running out of addresses on the internet? Is that right. what this address is? Uh, that's code PAPERS130 at go.factor75.com slash Papers one thirty for one hundred and thirty dollars off. All right, we gotta. The we gotta code is that. paper papers one three zero with no spaces. No spaces. The numbers one three zero. 
And it's go.factor75.com. Okay, good. There we go. All right, let's get to the front page, Mike Gibbons. Crinkle something, man. That sounded like, whoa. Ooh, that's a fresh piece of yellow paper right there. All You're going right. to blow people's earbuds away with this week's crinkling. Okay, you would put this story in originally, but then there was an update to it. So when you put this story about the Alabama prisoner on death row in here, there was some speculation that he was afraid of needles, right? Right. And so he and his lawyer had requested that he wasn't euthanized that way, if that's the right word, yeah. wasn't killed that way. But then I looked into the story, and I think— He's a, I think he became afraid of needles because this is the story I found and it was the most recent one. Alan Miller, 57, was sentenced to death after being convicted of a 1999 workplace rampage in which he killed three guys. The U.S. Supreme Court cleared the way for the execution shortly after 9 p.m. on Thursday. The execution team began preparations at about 10 p.m. and made multiple attempts to connect the IV line, but did not indicate exactly how long the state tried. They stopped trying to get venous access at about 11.20 p.m. So Alabama, an hour and 20 minutes later. They tried for an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Alabama Corrections Commissioner told reporters early Friday morning that accessing the veins was taking a little longer than we anticipated, and the state did not have sufficient time to get the execution underway by the midnight deadline. So it was called off, and it was determined the condemned inmates' veins could not be accessed in accordance to our protocol. This is the this is at least the third time Alabama has acknowledged problems getting access to veins during a lethal injection. How lucky are you? Yeah. I mean, I am so apologetic because mine are hard to find generally. Right. And I usually get validated. They're like, you're right. That was a little tricky. But but they find them. Yeah. Within a minute. You You should start. You should start killing people because they they're not going to be able to put you down, man. You, you, I got to kill people in Alabama. Yeah. Um, so there were three. The state's July execution of Joe Nathan took more than three hours to get underway, and they called off a 2018 execution after being unable to establish a line then. Crazy. Yeah. How about this? Hire Keith Richards. He can find a vein <laughs> in three seconds. He, he's the master. Oh, yeah. Or better yet, it's Alabama. You want to kill the guy? Kick him out of prison wearing a Black Lives Matter T-shirt and a pink pussy hat. I give him like six minutes. Put him in blackface and have him go for a jog. <laughs> How about that? Uh, by the way, I am fully assuming this guy's white, and I bet I'm right. Um, which am I, how about this? This is uh, Alan Miller, who went on a killing rampage. Uh, when you can't find that vein, be like, hey, Alan— you got any ideas how to kill someone? <laughs> you killed three people yeah. way faster than this is going. Yeah, yeah. Any tips? Any <laughs> tips? <laughs> how about this? We're going to leave the room. We're going to turn the camera the other way. When we come back, you know what to do. You know, yeah. Yeah, when we come back, we expect this to be done. Yeah, right, right. Or, or get a, uh, get a, uh, Silence of the Lambs guy. What's his name? Put him uh, in the Hannibal cell Lecter? next to Alan. Yeah. yeah. Have him do it. Like Miggs. He had Miggs choke on his own tongue or whatever it was. Um, uh, What was I going to say? Uh, Miggs distracted me. Because when we did the Ben show on Comedy Central, we thought we were going to have an actor's studio with Miggs, the guy in the next cell, a couple of cells down, and that actor. And it was all going to be a conversation about him throwing his splooge at Jodie Foster. (laughs) (laughs) The whole hour. Um... Uh, wait, what else was I going to say about this guy? Uh, I don't know. Well, anyway, we should follow up this story next yep. week. Yep. I, I mean, does he and get why another is it so year hard to kill because people? of paperwork? Look, I'm, not a, I'm not a believer in the death penalty because just I, I don't think the government does anything well enough that I would put the, the, the fate of a human life in their Ooh, hands. Oh, independent minded. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but it does, just doesn't seem like it should be that hard to kill somebody. I mean, do you have a brick? Yeah. 
Uh, at that point, anyway, now he's afraid of needles. Uh, maybe they just, hey, how about this? Come on down to the garage. We're going to leave a car running. That's humane. Yep. Right? You go to sleep. No, they've got a new thing where they just have you inhale, I think it's nitrogen. and uh, it Guard ver- farts. You very... <laughs> <laughs> Alabama guard farts. The Alabama guard farts. That'll fart. do it. Uh, should we talk about Spirit? Let's talk about Spirit. Here we go. Three former Spirit uh, Airlines employees. Sorry, let me just start again. Three former Spirit Airlines employees were charged this week with a scheme to profit off passengers looking to get cheaper flights. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. The indictment alleges that two Pennsylvania-based reservation agents would encourage travelers to book cheap future flights then alter their reservation to a more expensive flight for free without charging the airline's change fee. Instead, the indictment says the agents would charge customers a, quote, commission via cash app and pocket those funds. Between December 2017 and August 2018, the indictment, that's not that long, the indictment says the fraud cost the airline more than $238,000 in fees for more than 1,700 flights. I love it. Now, I'm all in on Spirit. Will yeah. Spirit bring back this policy? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, th- I'll, Venmo, I'll Venmo some chick in Dallas 50 bucks <laughs> if she can get me a cheap flight. Hell yeah. You know how much Spirit charges for a uh, carry-on bag? Yeah. Or the ability to choose your seat? Yeah. Well, right. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's a th- the thing is like, well, so now, uh, wait, you're charging me for the flight attendant? I thought they were paid by the airline. 50 bucks for seatbelts? What? That, that was my dumb joke about Allegiant Airlines. Allegiant, literally true. They did a 60 minutes, which was terrifying. Uh, the planes didn't stay in the sky as much as they wanted. And then 60 Minutes found out Allegiant Airlines' business model was buying old planes from all the other airlines. That was their business model. So my dumb joke was that one of their extra charges, like for carry-on, but there was also an extra charge if you wanted to land on the runway. And I thought that was very unfair. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like a, it's like one of those strip clubs that's off the main strip, and they get yeah. the dancers that are, <laughs> you know, starting to age a little bit. Yeah, they have a daycare there for their dancers. <laughs> Um, I just booked a flight. I'm flying back to New York for Christmas and oh my God, airfares are so crazy these days. And so I could not find flights for less than $800 each for my family to fly back to New York. And so my sister goes, well, try Breeze Airlines. They fly right into Westchester, which is where my, my sister lives in Westchester. So I, uh, I booked, I quickly, she goes, but do it quick. Cause the flights are going up. So I booked on, uh, and it was like six hundred bucks instead of eight hundred for the seats on Breeze mm-hmm. Airlines. And then I I pulled the trigger on the seats, not having read the reviews. Here's the reviews that I found on uh, 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 on Breeze Airways. Okay, uh, the first the first one is worst airline experience I've ever had. <laughs> uh, reimbursement communication I was given was false. Our flight oh, turned breeze. Our, our flight turned around mid air with mechanical issues. Um, then they ended up canceling it. Uh, the next one down says, uh, "Do not, do not fly Breeze Airways. Whatever you do." Uh, the next one down is, uh, "All the plane staff were not friendly." Um, then Allegiance were, looking better and better. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just, it, it's one that it's one out of ten stars on this one. So uh, so my Christmas, I got an adventure ahead of me. It's it's not gonna go smooth. I don't even know if we'll get there. Apparently they cancel a lot of flights, and then oh. there's no customer service number. It's all done through like you text you text them or something, and then apparently they don't get back to you. It's and all they don't telepathic. Ref- yeah. And they they don't refund your money. They just. Uh, they just give you a credit that it's impossible to use again <laughs> if you even are stupid enough to fly with them again. A credit for uh, Bonanza busways. So yeah. I'll let you know. I shouldn't badmouth them having not flown them, but I will give you guys Well, my those are real reviews. At Christmas, yeah. Well, you know, everyone's chatting about this recession that might be underway, and uh, the airline, pr- the prices are just... Also, these businesses... 
a lot of them, obviously, things cost more. We're about to do a story on turkeys. But Deep I, also businesses will get away with what they can. Yeah. I the think government they, needs to step in and stop the airlines from gouging people because this is out of hand. We just bought tickets to fly to Chicago from L.A., $680 round trip to fly to Chicago. Well, people are, listen, it might, the free market might correct itself. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, I am not traveling at Christmas. Like, forget it. It's like I have to yeah. move my family like you're doing, and it's now four times whatever that price is. Yeah. After tax dollars, forget that. Yeah. All right. Turkeys are selling for record high prices ahead of Thanksgiving holiday. <laughs> as a resurgence of bird flu wipes out supplies across the U.S. Avian influenza is a devastating egg and turkey operations in the heartland of the country. It's ju If just one bird gets it, the entire flock is culled in order to stop the spread. Jesus. It, that's what they should have done with COVID. Yes. With, with people. Culling. We forgot to cull. China, I think, culled. I think China culled people. Cuba culled. Yeah. <laughs> Millions of hens and turkeys have been killed in recent weeks. As a result, prices for turkeys, hens are nearly 30% higher than a year ago and 80% above pre-pandemic costs. Just as concerning are inventories of whole turkeys, which are the lowest going into the U.S. winter holiday uh, since 2006. That means there will be little relief from inflation for Thanksgiving dinner. And I think the turkeys don't want to. The turkeys don't want any part of us either, because we're riddled with bat flu. You're right, competing flus. They yeah. have bird flu. They're all are bats, avian. I think so. So turkeys. Of course they are. I mean, a turkey with Maybe the flu. Eroded. It's like, God, the great the, this gravy that you made on the turkey. It's delicious, so creamy and salty. Uh, what'd you make it from? Oh no, that's uh, that's just the uh, snot from the turkey. <laughs> That's his own snot. He he made the gravy himself. Because the flu? <laughs> um, so I guess we need to put masks on the turkeys and keep them out of Dutch raves. <laughs> That's what it is? Yeah. Next week it's going to be turkeys have monkeypox. <laughs> the gays, the gays and what they'll do with carcasses and yeah. turkeys. Yeah. Don't bring a gay guy to your Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, the giblets. They're all over the giblets. All right, it's time for giblets? good news for gubbins. Partied with gubbins last night. It was really fun. And then we were over Mikey's and uh, we started talking about it. It's the oldest idea in the world, but we started talking about best first albums. And uh, so we could start people writing in those but you know the cars we already did that we did that on the uh we had people write in remember that was best first song right uh oh that's right it was best first song on a first album right but entire Which first albums, always changes the rules he always is like that yeah. album doesn't count yeah, yeah yeah like he doesn't count nirvana's first album whatever so but never mind was actually their second album Exactly. Right. But uh, the Cars first album, whether you like the Cars or not, it does it has, I think, seven songs that are literally played on the radio in every American city every single week. It's still crazy. today. It's crazy. It's the it's it might be the best. Also, uh, Tom Petty's uh, "Damn the Torpedoes" has ah. probably six or seven songs that are in full rotation. You know what was one someone put on was the Police. Dude. Oh, yeah. The yeah. police came fully formed. Yep. Yep. And then, and then, uh, 10 by Pearl Jam. Holy 10 was their first album? No. I, I mean, that's what no, we said 10 last was not night. their first album. You don't think so? It, uh, definitely not. All right. I'm, I'm Googling it but now. But I will put Pretenders, Our phone. the eponymously self titled, uh, Pretenders' first album is fucking killer. I'm sure Sabbath will come in. Now, I don't know much about hip hop, but did anyone like what was Eminem's like, Jay Z's? I right. mean, I am Matt. Also, those are a little confusing because so many of them had tapes out. You know what I mean? Like in early hip hop. Well, and they, what about the what about the Fugees? Uh, the score yeah. that first album is fucking crazy. Oh, so Denman is saying ten is their first. PJ album? What's PJ? 
Probably Pearl Jam. Oh, Pearl Jam. Wild <laughs> guess. <laughs> wow, that was their first album? That's and, insane. And it has, uh, yeah, PJ Harvey, and it has, dude, it has more hits than I remember. I, I In my memory, I had put, I'm not like the biggest Pearl Jam guy, but I had put some of those songs in my mind, like on their second album, you know? I just can't believe that I can love a band as much as I love Pearl Jam. And if you ask, if you gave me a, 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 a notebook and said, okay, write down all the lyrics you know from their songs, I think I'd cover two lines. Right, uh, like right, it's right. purely attitude, tone, music. The lyrics, I don't know the fucking lyrics. I mean, obviously, Daughter. There's a couple songs where they're kind of clear on their lyrics, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of them are really difficult. Well, to I mean, that album pop with, I mean, Jeremy was just the anthem of that summer and the video yeah. was huge. Right. I mean, like people like Biggie, you know, who did not have a long career. I mean, his first album must have been crazy, right? Um, I'm guessing. Was it called uh, The Notorious B.I.G.? Yeah. I think, well, who knows? But also they had so many... Again, they were releasing stuff unofficially, so sometimes that's what was happening right. in Tupac and anyway, stuff. Anyway, get to your story about Gubbins. NWA? Oh, so uh, we're, you know, having a good time, and we're eating a lot of food and other stuff. And anyway, uh, all, there's a large carving knife on the table that is, if it was a little longer, it would be a sword. So for comedic effect dennis couldn't stop touching this thing and kind of wielding it for comedic effect he was cutting his like chicken and steaks up with this really long knife that was put out there i think to carve the steak and um and anyway he was doing it like that at one point <laughs> at one point um a friend of ours went into the house and left their phone on the table. And all of a sudden you hear this crash. And I thought for sure the whole phone smashed on the ground. And he just grabbed it and just like sliced under it. I don't know if he was trying to like get the blade under the phone so the phone wouldn't move. You know what I mean? But it smashed the phone and sent it flying <laughs> off the table with a ton of force. And he's holding the knife and he goes, how did that happen? <laughs> And he wasn't trying to be funny. He was like, I'm like, I think it might have been the sword that you just flung at the phone. I think that might have done it. And he was just shocked, I guess, it made contact. I think he thought yeah. it would just sail under it. I don't even know what happened. Yeah. But uh, it didn't break somehow, thank God. Oh, and we were in, it's at Mikey's, and he's in between two of these houses and he has a really nice outdoor area with a dining table and ever been in those places where a vortex, they call it like a sound vortex. But when you're in a certain position, you're like, ah, and you find it, it reverberates. Yes. The capital. And so the problem is when you have Dennis who uh, can be like with the knife also like a four year old child, we did have to take the knife away from him. He found that vortex and would talk all night, night, and he would be like, put on the cars, you know, and anyway, uh, and then he's singing Jeremy in the vortex. It was quite amusing, I have to say. All right. See, yeah. so, see, good news for Gubbins is not always slamming Gubbins. Sometimes we rejoice in the yes. joy of hanging out with, uh, with Dennis. Notorious B.I.G., Ready to Die, first album, six times platinum. Damn. I feel bad for artists today because nobody buys their albums. It's like it changed in fucking seven years. Nobody yeah. buys. I guess. I guess. Obviously, they still sell some albums. People, but compare. Nobody's going platinum. I don't think anymore. I think people. You know who's one of the last artists? Maybe like people are, seem to be very aware of Beyonce's albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because she'll drop an album, and and maybe. It's the same with Ariana Grande or whoever like kids are following now. But uh, and and we're forgetting so many. I mean, the Velvet Underground that album. You know, there's classic albums. I don't know what Bowie's first album was. Um, but there was I know his best album is uh, Hunky Dory. I listened to it twice in one day this week. People will talk about Boston's album, which was crazy yeah, that out was of the crazy. gate, and yep. you know, everyone wanted to follow up, which sort of never came, and then it did. Mm -hmm. Years later, I think. But yeah. anyway, uh, I'm wondering, yeah. And also, part of the best first album, like, the police really made us recognize that, I mean, they just, like, 
landed, kind of like we talked about the first song, fully formed, you know? Here yeah. was punk meets reggae in some form with some island and unbelievable drumming. And, uh, yeah, it's incredible. All right, let's get to entertainment. You got it, pal. All right. Um, I finished Better Call Saul, the series. I no, uh, I think they're done. I think that was the they series are. finale. Yeah. And um, now that guy is doing a new show, I think on HBO, with uh, maybe her name is Rhea Seahorn, but with the woman from Better Call Saul. She's been on my podcast. She's amazing. She, wow. She's so good. Yeah, it's not only is it going to be the uh, same, what's the producer's name? The Better Call Saul, the greatest. Vince, Vince Gilligan. Vince Gilligan. Not only is Vince Gilligan, it's the same studio. I think it's Sony Studios, and it's Why like a not? lot of the same people. Dude, you have the team together. You've put out Breaking Bad and then Better Call Saul. Obviously, that makes sense. Like, stay together. Right, right. You know? Um, so it so is... I went I went, and I'm like, I'm in season five? How many seasons are there of Better Call Saul? I think Saul? there's six. So I'm in season five, I think, but I went. I haven't watched it in months, 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 maybe a year. I, it's like falling asleep reading a book. I kept going back, and I'm like, I don't remember this. I, so I literally went back to look at, and I'm looking for those trailers, like, previously on. And I can't find these fucking things. And there's there's teasers for the seasons, but there's so much. Anyway, I'm having trouble getting my footing to then finish it. Um, yeah, it is difficult. It is complex because there's a lot of, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco, who's so funny. He does, he does a whole routine about, um, watching TV with his wife or watching movies with his wife and they do flashbacks and that they're so dumb that it's just like, wait, is he, so he's the kid now? It's just so fun. It's so fucking funny, but they do so many flashbacks and stuff with Saul. It's difficult to keep track sometimes. And in this final season, its time is all over the place. But it is genius the way they do. It's so unexpected. It is not the linear. All finish. right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Sorry. House of the Dragon. We talked about. I'm Snore. gonna. I'm gonna give it a chance. Bowie. Sunday night. We talked about. You're What's oh the that. old? Where are you on the old oh, man? Oh, I I just finished the third episode of the old man. I am in. I first of all. Jeff Bridges is my favorite living actor. Wow. And, and I think that this show. He's become Chris Christopherson. Yes, he has. He totally has. 100%. Um, and, uh, oh, I he, had a dream. Chris Christopherson died. Wow. That just oh hit me. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Which That's is going to happen soon, I um, think. I think it's, it's great writing. Um, and I have no problem with the old guy being an action star. He's 72. How old is Liam Neeson? Liam Neeson is still doing uh, action movies. Why not? Does he ever act without food in his mouth, Jeff Bridges, at this point? That's no, a big that's question true. I have. That's Some true. comedian did a thing on Jeff Bridges. Uh, it was really... F oh, 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 Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey was on Conan's podcast. He was like... Oh, so, oh. He was like... Sh and all of a sudden, he's like, guys, born and bred in Malibu. Like, And he, he's, <laughs> it's like he's on the panhandle of, like, you know, I mean, in uh, Texas, you know, or Oklahoma. And, uh, and like, you found him, like, you know, in a back cabin. Yeah. Liam Neeson, by the way, is 70 years old. And uh, Jeff Bridges is 72. So, you know, hey, it gives me hope. Maybe I can still get into action stuff. Yeah. Uh, we had, speaking of action, we had done some names. They said the next Bond might be gay. Uh, people sent in some titles. Uh, right. This guy, Bernie Ho Baby Cat, sent in Octatushi. Huh. Octatushi, you're welcome, fuckface. Get bent truly. Thanks, Bernie Ho, for the positive energy. I like get bent. All right. So um, this is the text chain from. Adam Levine. Who writes like a 12-year-old. Yeah, you want to read it? Adam, <clears throat> on this text, screen grab. It is truly unreal how fucking hot you are. Like, it blows my mind. Uh, and then she's like, I mean, I think the same. Seeing you in person, I was like, I'm fucked. You are 50 times hotter in person. And so am I. Ha, 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 ha. All right. That's not exactly modest. 
Um, four women have now accused the Maroon 5 lead singer Adam Levine of sending them inappropriate messages. Levine has been married to blah, blah, blah. Less than a week ago, uh, the woman confirmed that she and Levine are expecting, oh, his wife confirmed they're expecting their third child. However, four days later, the couple's pregnancy news was overshadowed by cheating allegations. Sumner Stroh, an Instagram model, claimed to have engaged in an affair with Levine. Levine appeared to ask if he could use her name for his new baby. So this is the weird thing. Out of nowhere, I mean, they had an affair, I guess, according to her. <clears throat> Levine contacts her and goes, my wife is pregnant, and we're thinking of naming it Sumner, which is her name, this woman. Is that cool? Here he goes, quote, okay, serious question. I'm having another baby, and if it's a boy, I really want to name it Sumner. You okay with that? Dead serious. W- w- what is he doing? Wow. So then she's like, felt that was inappropriate. Reach out. I don't exactly understand this turn, but then she went public saying that she did have an affair, and then people call bullshit. <clears throat> so she screen grabbed uh, the text messages. Then three others followed suit. Why does anybody have an affair anymore? Like in what world? Like I'm not gonna say there's there's a uh, there's another celebrity who I went on Reddit and I looked up his past with some women, and uh, and it, it was so embarrassing to read his text messages. He was trying to get a woman to have sex with. What I don't want to get into it because I don't want to start yeah. the whole thing. But uh, but it was so gross. It, what he wrote was so fucking vile. And uh, and you just think like why why would you have an affair like affairs like the internet if there's an upside of the internet maybe it's that people will stop cheating on their spouses so much because you're gonna get fucking busted it's it's inevitable all right so I had a day and we actually kind of like became friends but this is years ago I when when the writers room at Corden put me on Raya I went on a date with a super hot. A uh, woman who lived in the valley, right? And and you know, age. Of, she wasn't that young, but she's she was a former model, and she would tell me story. And we then like kind of like became friends. Nothing ever happened, but she would tell me stories of married celebrities who would find her on Raya, and after like there was chemistry or whatever, or like texting, and some she didn't know like were married or some it didn't even matter. Many were not married. A non-disclosure agreement was brought up before the texts got out of hand. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So these dudes have consulted their lawyers and they're like, I am gonna fool around. I hope to like, you know, get out there uh, and with well, with a lot of women and a non-disclosure agreement. Now, I guess that also protects them if or they think they're protected if they're married. Yeah, I don't know about the how those NDAs hold up. Another deep uh, tease. We're going to talk about Ellen in a minute because I think our non-disclosures are defunct now, right? The show's well, this off is the a, this is a news story, but I have to say this news story you're about to read, I think it's one of the ones where Ellen comes off not the worst. Believe it or not, I disagree. Oh wow! All right, Ellen DeGeneres' former protege, Grace and Chance, claims he's. And this is a long article, but I'm going to read it because it's worth it. Really? Okay. Claims he's never met someone more manipulative, self, more self-centered, and more blatantly opportunistic than her. Check, check, in a, check. In a bombshell Rolling Stone interview published Thursday, the Oklahoma native, now 25, reflected on his life and career after a viral video of him performing Lady Gaga's paparazzi in front of his schoolmates landed him on DeGeneres' now-defunct talk show in May 2010, when he was just 12 years old. Let me interject. So this is a thing that Ellen started doing. She would find these cute kids. We've all seen it. She has these adorable kids and he's singing Usher or whatever it is. And she would get them even more. She would make them go even more viral and super famous. And so she got the idea. Why don't I get a piece of this? Like yes. I'm launching. So that right. And this was a kid exactly like that. Quote, we just couldn't believe what was happening, he told the magazine. We were so unsure of what we were getting into, and the person that helped cure all of that skepticism and chaotic energy was Ellen. When the two first met, claimed the musician, DeGeneres said to him, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be here for you. We're going to do this together. 
Ellen DeGeneres breakout star Grace and Chance ripped the comedian in an interview published Thursday. Soon, soon after, she co-created 1111, a record label distributed by Interscope Geffen, and signed Chance as her first act. She also hooked him up with high-profile managers, a booking agent and a publicist, and a brand agent. In October 2010, Chance released a mini EP. As his touring schedule became more demanding, he claimed, DeGeneres became domineering and way too controlling. My whole week, my whole month, my whole year could change with one text message from her. That was horrible, he alleged, adding that quickly learned that only DeGeneres' opinions mattered. Chance claimed DeGeneres was manipulative, self-centered, and blatantly opportunistic. A close, a source close to DeGeneres denies Chance's recollection of the relationship, however, and said the comedian went above and beyond for the young musician. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Um so uh so she she told him to watch this uh I guess there was a uh, there was a the documentary. Justin Bieber documentary. Yeah, and and so he didn't watch it right away. And then she got irate. And uh and then she the, she said to the mother after this, "What type of mother are you?" He recalled hearing the comedian allegedly ask his mom before she purportedly said to him directly, "Disappointed isn't even remotely what I'm feeling right now." Um, Chance said the generous, widely rumored wrath seeped into every aspect of his career. She would come in and look at a rack, yell at stylists, berate people in front of me, and say, this is what you're wearing on the show. Check, she was check, just check. degrading to people. I mean, none of that stuff is new news. I mean, how many people have come out and said specifically these exact personality traits about her now are we corroborating i don't know that we can because of our non-disclosure agreement but i would say that uh i've certainly read a million things that are the same as this yeah i thought it was going to be worse i thought it was going to be like a colonel tom like, like you know where he didn't realize she gets 95 percent of his proceeds or you know something like that and then this guy kept going on her show even when they hadn't spoken in over a year and then Ellen ghosted him entirely when his sales dropped off and all his this. His sales dropped off, and she dumped him. The agent dumped him. The manager dumped him. Like, literally in six months, as soon as one of his albums flopped, he was dead to them. And I know. And she never responded to him. And then uh, he but came out But that's business. As, and then he came out as gay, and then he came on the show. Like, it was weird, because, like, every few years she'd have him back on the show. I know, that was weird. But she wouldn't talk to him backstage. She would only talk to him while the cameras were rolling. And then she acted like she helped him come out of the closet when, in fact, he said she hadn't talked to him in years. Maybe that helped him come out of the closet. <laughs> also, uh, can I get that in writing that Ellen won't talk to me unless the cameras are rolling? Yes. Uh, and she won't nice? bother me or visit me in my dressing room? Like, right. okay, that that's that's a perk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, all right, enough before we get in trouble. Let's do Make America Florida. You got it, pal. A Florida highway had to temporarily... Um, you're so frozen. Are you good? Yeah. Can you see all me? All right. Yeah, you were still you were holding that paper above your head for about a minute. Yeah. A Florida highway had to temporarily close Wednesday after a semi-trailer carrying cases of Coors Light crashed and turned the roadway into a silver sea of beer cans. The pileup began when one semi-trailer clipped another while changing lanes. That forced other semis to break, but one failed to stop and collided with a pickup truck. The semi that failed to stop was filled with cases of the silver bullet beer. Minor injuries were reported by the occupants of the pickup truck. And um, <laughs> the whole road, of course, which which truck's not going to stop? The one with the silver bullet train on it. That's what's <laughs> exactly. happening. Exactly. It's got it. Yeah, it's got it's got a big delivery. And by the way, I heard and this is true. Brett Kavanaugh adopted that highway mile <laughs> right after the accident. <laughs> beer causing a major wipeout on a highway florida who do you think you are sturgis <laughs> yeah um uh, can you imagine like, yeah 
No, go ahead. Can you imagine though? The whole apparently they, oh they had pictures of it. The silver bullet cans were I mean everywhere all over and it just looked like i could just picture all these fat florida guys there like bears on right. a salmon run in a river yeah. just grabbing tall boys in their mouths as they're yeah. all flailing about yeah it's like a nature documentary and instead of bears and moose and and <laughs> otters it would be like frat guys from fsu fucking guys in maga hats all yeah. just like yeah all just shotgunning coors lights bunch of japanese tourists taking pictures of them <laughs> all slapping away at these fat bears just putting cans in their mouth yeah um, um more florida news it's called td9 tropical depression nine yes it's looking increasingly like it will become a major hurricane threat to florida so i love these terms i love the weather terms there's the cone of uncertainty and I think that phrase, I think I saw a guy talk about it on Twitter, is 20 years old or something. And that's the probable track. And it has this uh, storm, which would maybe be a hurricane, uh, potentially hitting Tampa, our favorite, on Tuesday. Wow. 1 p.m. today, Saturday, Governor Ron DeSantis has expanded his state of emergency declaration to include the entire state of Florida. So now migrants are asking DeSantis, when is the next chartered plane to the vineyard? <laughs> we all want to get on it. Yeah. I want to go to the black dog. <laughs> Was that a migrant? <laughs> yes. Yes. And I heard that pregnant women in Florida who want abortions are planning on a beach day on Tuesday. You know, just kind of wade in <laughs> up to their bellies. <laughs> uh, NASA has been trying to get this Artemis uh, rocket launched, and it was supposed to launch Tuesday. It is canceled. By the way, the Tropical Depression 10, uh, it became Tropical Storm Hermione, and it has a maximum sustained wind gust of 35 miles per hour if it grows it will become tropical storm ian mm -hmm. so um this is the only thing allowed to transition to a female in uh it, to a male in florida <laughs> but no teachers are allowed to talk about it yeah right no teachers can talk about tropical storm ian in florida <laughs> you will be fired yes uh, all right, let's get to, uh, let's skip Am Amanda Poor. Yeah, international, that interview. Boy, she let them off the hook. She did? She, well, she wouldn't wear a headscarf, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. Then he doesn't have to, yeah, whatever. That's a that's a deep tease. Maybe right, we'll do it next I guess, week. Let's, here's what it is. Christine Amapour, Amanpour, Christiane Amanpour, the CNN <laughs> journalist. Did, why did I say it with such disdain in my voice? I'm on Amon, I thought it was Amon, Amon yeah. Said Thursday that she backed out of an interview with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi after one of his aides said it would not happen unless she wore a headscarf. So, um, well played, well played, Raisi. Yes, yes. I think that she should have said, "I'll wear a headscarf, but he has to wear one of those Steve Martin arrows through the head." Keep in mind, Christiane wanted this interview badly so this dictator could answer questions about the woman killed in custody uh, who was brought in for violating the dress code. So it's literally about this dress code. So specifically the headdress. Can't the isn't there a didn't... zoom isn't there a zoom filter with a headscarf? Right. Can we can we put that like you put something yeah. on an emoji? Right, also right. it's full headscarfs are in. Make it work. <laughs> Yes, she could look like Jackie O. You'll put uh, on a pantsuit to go interview some uh, corporate titan at his country club. You'll put, you know, you'll you'll uh, you'll do their dress code. I think she should have showed story. up. Get the story. I think she should have showed up with the headscarf, but then also braless in a tube top with denim shorts and just just seductively licking a chocolate popsicle during the interview. How about during the interview, you have the headscarf on and you're like, so this woman was killed in custody and she was killed because, and you start to take it off. Isn't that right. an effective question? Yes. I you like already it. got them. Cameras are rolling. Yep. I like it. Uh, 
Canadian God, actor. I got I got to produce news. Canadian actor Ryan Grantham was sentenced to life in prison after he pleaded guilty to killing his mother in March. Grantham, who starred in Riverdale and Diary of a Wimpy Kid, yeah. shot and killed his mother while she was playing piano. The next day, he <laughs> loaded his car with firearms, Molotov cocktails, camping supplies, and a map that had directions to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's home. Whoa. Grantham planned to kill Trudeau, but drove to Hope, British Columbia, before turning the car around with a plan to commit mass violence at his school. Instead of committing these, ass, these acts, he drove to Vancouver police and admitted to, kill, to killing his mother. All I could say is, what a wimp. <laughs> he pussed out. He really wimped out, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, don't call a kid a wimp, man. See what happens? Yes, even if it's in a fictitious version of it. Uh, you know, he just he carried that around with him. There's certain movie roles that you realize you just get marked with for life, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, who else? What are some other, other movie roles that you wouldn't be able to shake? Um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I don't know. Well, but we should, uh, we should work harder on this. Yeah, maybe. But uh, I'd love to know what the mom was playing when he shot her in the back of the head. <laughs> Chopsticks again. Shot through the head, and you're to blame. Uh, oh my God! All right, let's do some sports. Sure thing now. Uh, the family of a 12-year-old Little League World Series player who suffered a fractured skull after falling from a bunk bed with no safety rails, is suing the league and the company that made the bed. Hmm. Uh, Easton Oliverson of Utah's Snow Canyon Little League fell from a bunk bed while sleeping in the dormitory in Pennsylvania. Injured, he was placed in, me in a medically induced coma, underwent multiple surgeries. Uh, the suit is asking for $50,000. You 50. know, they, they should have put a warning track on the edge of the bed, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> they don't need a safety guard, just a warning track. Did they not suspect foul play when he was found on the ground with a wedgie so far <laughs> up his ass and pulled over his head? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the bed's exactly. fault. Exactly, yeah. Were the other kids giggling when they came in and found him dead in the morning? <laughs> he he should have, you know, how did he fall on his head? He should have slid. Should have slid. <laughs> At that age, I don't think they're supposed to do head first dives yet. And by the way, when you send your kid off, uh, you know, unattended to some some childhood fucking camp. It's like this is the best case scenario. If I was the defense attorney, I'd be like, um, I'd like to point out that this could have been worse. To uh, did anyone diddle you? Did anyone yeah. show you their penis? Your Honor, the defense rests. Uh, uh, we're all aware of under the banner of heaven, right? Does everybody right? I mean, this kid <laughs> did pretty well, actually. Yeah. Um. You want to read this home run story? <clears throat> Albert Pujols, 700 home runs. Uh, this is what Chris, this is what Midcoast Media put in our document. The Cardinals legend reaches a rare milestone with a two home run night versus the Dodgers. The first home run was in uh, April 6th, 2001 versus the Diamondbacks. And his 700th home run was uh, yesterday versus the Dodgers. The 700 Club includes Barry Bonds at 762. Hank Aaron, it's set with a giant goddamn asterisk, by the way. Hank Aaron at 755 and Babe Ruth at 714. And then you got Albert at 700. And how I mean, old? Yeah. How old is Albert? Does he have, he's got some time left playing the game? Good question. Here comes Denman with the uh, St. Louis He's answer. He's 42 years old. Last year, it's over. Oh, this is his last After year. After this year, yeah. All right. So, meanwhile, everyone is trying to, you know, watching Aaron Judge to see if he, I guess, ties the American League record, right? It's 61 home runs. I think he has 60 now, but that's yeah. that, that doesn't equal the juiced record. I think the juiced record is like 72. Well, that's National League, yeah, but... 
Uh, oh, you're saying the American League around. Okay. But there are also giant asterisks over there. And, you know, one guy broke it down, you know, all the baseball nerds, of course. But one is, like, it was a different time then. Like, for instance, Judge is so far ahead of everybody else. Like, he's truly, like, in a league of his own with a lot of stuff going on. Also, there's a chance he'll do the Triple Crown, which would be amazing. Um, and so, but back when those guys uh, were doing it, McGuire and Bonds, there was always, and Sosa, uh, there was always, like, number two wasn't that far behind. They were all juicing like crazy. Well, yeah, and not to mention the pitching that you're facing today is so much harder. They didn't used to bring in five relievers in a game. There was right. there was one reliever and there was a closer. That was it. Right. Um, and now Chris is writing... How about pitchers that are black, Hispanic, et cetera? This is, I guess, you, you don't have to read. You don't have them. to read everything Chris writes. You know that, right? All right. <laughs> Just the racist stuff. Um, it's uh, so yeah, a giant asterisk there. But some people point out you don't think you know Aaron Judge has ever taken some performance enhancing drug at some point. That's true. Um. Yeah, I know. What really is amazing are the old, I mean, like Maris, you know, like no hot tubs in the locker room, no ice plunges in the locker room after, no, I mean, uh, for all the high tech stuff. They took a right. bus all the time. The uh, the accommodations were shit. Right. Like they were really, you know, tougher conditions and no medical science like it is today. Um. So Plus, anyway. they didn't cork the bats. Um, the uh, let's talk about football. The Buccaneers. Oh, I am two and zero oh against you. You're down a hundred dollars. Tampa Bay has beat the spread two weeks in a row by a fucking big margin this past week. And then, what's the going on? I know what's going on this week. This week, Green Bay. Uh, I'm only giving you one point, and I'm playing you at home. So you're fucked. Maybe yeah. Brett Favre could have a lot of money uh, taken from charities. Uh, and uh, Oh, yeah. Why didn't we cover that story this week? Did we do it already? Deep tease. All We're right, going to do it. How about week. we do it next week? It's going to be like a John How Oliver is he story. not We're getting? How is it not a lead story? How is Brett Favre not getting in, in, in as much trouble as he should be? Um, uh, because people love him. Yeah, because he did something about Mary. Oh, my God. Mm. Is it because he's white? I don't know, but I'll tell you this much. It's time for science. All right. Uh, the com there's, a, there's vagina flavored potato chips now on the market. The company oh called God. Chaz created the crisps as a result of research they claim suggests that millen Well, never mind all of that. After tasting it, you will remember your wildest love adventures, your first real love. Um, really, it's only it's only available in Europe. Although you can email and request that it gets shipped to get shipped to you somewhere else, retailing at ten dollars a bag. Um, you know what I want on a vagina flavored chip is sour cream. <laughs> How <laughs> yeah. disgusting! That's the uh, that's the New Jersey version of the chip. Yeah. It's got cottage cheese on it. V and I, vinegar. Put How about a little vinegar also yeah. with the chips? By the way, don't be surprised if you find a hair in the bag. <laughs> the the worst selling chip to gay men ever. <laughs> uh, the chips come with, with ketchup packets for that time of the month. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I had a worse one. I took two jokes out. I yeah. didn't even see this story. When did you add this? This morning? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Who put All them right. out? Gwyneth Paltrow? It seems like something <laughs> she'd do. Yeah. All right. Let's get to some business. You want to read right. this fun story that you put in? A, a well, laugh riot? No, it's actually... I, I'm going to... I did this a couple of weeks ago when everyone had their <clears throat> panties in a bunch over uh, the stock market going down. Stock market, incredibly rough week. Uh, the recession, they say, has begun. But listen, over two years, like the S&P, over two years, its return, the total return is still 
14%. The three-year is 27%. The five-year on the S&P is 49%. It's And by the way, the 10-year is 160%. So everyone stop complaining. You have to pay the piper. It's been obscene the last eight years. Obscene. It is weird. We, we have no tolerance for loss in this country. Everything has to... Every company's earnings have to go up every quarter or the stock plummets. It just that's not how businesses work. That's not how national economies work. Things go up and they come down. There's growth, there's rebirth, there's death, there's cycles. And no one talk about Democrats or Republicans. The government just wrote checks for the last 10 12 years. Like it's just check. And even before with, Ob- I mean, Obama had the crisis and, but the government's just written checks. Uh, some economists could obviously identify the exact turn where America was like, well, we don't really care about debt anymore. And then since then it's like, and eventually that catches up, you know, catches up to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I've been shorting. I, I've been like, this is unreal. And I've lost a lot of money shorting the market with like ETFs over the last 10 years. And now finally, I like yesterday, I remember one of the ETFs I had was up, up 10%, but it doesn't matter. I've lost so much. I'm never going to catch up. But uh, anyway, it's crazy. But it's I'm going to take my money up. out of the stock market and I'm going to pay down my mortgage because that's money in the bank. If I pay down my mortgage, then I'm not paying mortgage interest. And I don't think the stock market is going to go up for a couple of years. Who knows? I mean, I guess there's the dollar cost averaging and, you know, you just keep buying it as it goes down and you're hoping these, you know, maybe solid big companies will do all right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I listen, I'm the last person anyone should ask for advice on this. Oh, but, you know, that's there's, for sure. But there's those bonds. Get that I bond that you talked yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Get the I bonds, people. All right, let's do some letters to the editor. All right, then. Okay, you guys were talking about Family Circus and whether to continue it, and Mike said something like, okay, I'll try to find some funny ones. Again, it is not about uh, finding funny ones. The thing that actually made it funny was Mike reading through soul-crushingly unfunny. A lot of people are complaining that Family Circus is gone, Mike. I don't know if I could do it. They're really so bad and zero effort. All right, Chris, uh, go go find a random one and put it in right now. Put it I in, guess Chris. we'll look at it. Do I, mean, it. I can't wait to die laughing. Lastly, I know both of you are into music and love when the discussions go there. I've heard Mike mention an L.A. radio station before that I believe streams online and talked about how great the mixes of music can be. Uh, wonder if there's you could talk about any other radio stations that still have a good disc jockey and an old-school radio vibe. I'm in Chicago. All right, go to my show on October 15th if you're in Chicago. I mean, uh, is he asking? I, I talked about 88.5 FM, and it's at a college. No commercials, no news, and great DJs. Great who, DJs, and then on Sundays. It's from, amazing how eclectic it is. From 9 to noon, they have a Bob Dylan. Uh, they call it the Bob Dylan Radio Hours, and it's amazing. Uh, but it's always good. It's always good. They don't try too hard. Like NPR's morning becomes eclectic. It's so uh, tries so hard. It's always like some fucking Cuban bongo player doing fusion with. They try to pretend they like hip hop, but they they play horrible hip hop. Everything is so woke. This station is just cool and different, and you'll find new music on it that's great. I followed I, this guy. I found this guy this week. For some reason, it came across my Instagram feed. And it is the coolest. It's the coolest music, I mean, and also pop culture stuff. Anyway, his name is Mason Dufresne. M-A-I-S-O-N-D-U-F-R-E-N-E. And that is the name of his account. And I guess he has a podcast. And he'll show the playlist sometimes. They're unbelievable. So really cool. Um, so anyway, that that's also, my Also, if you have Sirius XM, listen to classic vinyl. There's a guy named Earl Bailey, who's an old school FM DJ who gives you lots of great stories and factoids in between songs. There's uh, Meg Griffin is also on classic vinyl, and she also does the Beatles channel. Uh, so she's great. Oh, I know why I dreamt Chris Christopherson died. Because the other night I got in my car 
and it was like maybe 10 or something. Anyway, turn it on. That station was on. And there's a Christopherson song. I'm like, holy, wow. I mean, they, I know they're eclectic, but, and then, then another one. And I was like, oh shit, he died. But I guess it, w- it was Tuesday night. And I guess it was a two for Tuesday. Cause then he played, uh, some music that had nothing to do with Christopherson next. And anyway, so still alive, but that's what did it. But that's how eclectic this station is. What's this email I'm seeing here? Did you put this in? Earth, Wind, and Fire shook his rearview mirror? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so this was about, oh, letter to the editor. You forwarded me this. A guy wrote in and goes, you know, Mike was talking about Jurassic Park and was talking about the cup vibrating in the car when the T-Rex was walking, like the tremors from the T-Rex. So this guy wrote in and he sent me a link, but I couldn't copy and paste from it. But the link was about where Spielberg got that inspiration. He was in his car and I sounds unlikely, but Spielberg was cranking earth, wind and fire in his car and his rear view mirror would vibrate and shake. And that's where apparently he got the idea to do the vibrating. And the way they did it is they rigged the car. I kind of didn't understand this part. But the props guy or the tech guy on set of Jurassic Park put a guitar string like attached across the dash or wherever near the uh, cup and they would pluck it. And that's what did the vibrations. I bet it was September. Guarantee it was September. Which was the 23rd day. Just happened. Ah. Is it the 23rd? 21st? 21st? 23rd? 21st is the first day of fall, so welcome to fall, everybody. It's 21st. Okay, 21st. Yeah. That's the uh, autumnal solstice, Autum- autumnal equinox. Oh, the days are equal right now, right? That yeah. just happened, yeah. Man, it uh, happens fast. Listen, it's because we've gotten older. If there's any young listeners out here, you have no idea how short years are. You, Although... My kids say they're, it's because they're not bored anymore that they think time is also going fast. When, yeah. when, we, when we were early teens, dude, a school year was an eternity, and summer yeah. was also long. Yep, I know. And I think a lot, most of it was boredom. But anyway, I see, like an old man, I see the sun because I can look out. I see the sunsets, and it is noticeable Every three days, like the sun is moving. I can't notice it day to day, but every three or four days, I notice the sun is setting further south because, you know, we are tilting north right now at the planet. So anyway, it's like you can see the months and years go by. Yeah. I want I want them to get rid of daylight savings. I'm I can't. I'm already depressed thinking about how days are going to get shorter next month. Here, for the first time in my life, and again, I think it's because I'm becoming an old man. For the first time in my life, when summer, when spring came this past year, I missed it getting dark earlier. I was like more productive. I started dinners earlier. I started maybe having a cocktail earlier. And it was all of a sudden I was again then up past midnight all summer because dinner would never happen before eight. It was still light out. Yeah. I don't know. It was the first time I was like, I am gravitating towards earlier nights. Yeah. I bet some people like it when it's not as late as between 8 and 9 p.m. when the sun goes down. Yeah. No? You? All right, let's do some funnies. Uh, not even listening. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My caffeine buzz just fucking wore off. There it goes. Uh, Right, We're not going to do obituaries, but I guess we covered, you know, Nurse Ratchet. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, for the funnies, uh, this won't make the Lockhorn Strip any funnier. Uh, difficult to believe either of them never heard of John Cage. Can you maybe mention you're reading a letter? Oh, this is a letter, yeah. <laughs> this is from Stephen Blackwood. Uh, Cage's most famous famous work is called 433. It's four minutes and 33 seconds, which consists of nothing but silence um so imagine being played in a loop so uh the reasoning behind the piece is that by 1952 when this was written quotes muzak had become ubiquitous and cage hated it this was his response 
By the way, another great show, but Mike seems to be dozing off at times right in the middle of talking. Yeah. Right in the middle of my self-talking? Yeah, of course. I think that's fair and I'd consider it, actually. You know, when you're like, oh, another thing about Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um, more people talking about Dilbert. Okay. All right, so, Dilbert. This Popular is the big comic news. Strip. Yeah. You want to read it? Why don't you read this? Popular comic strip has been canned by 77 newspapers after its creator, Scott Adams, started incorporating anti-woke plot lines, including a black character who identifies as white. I assumed it was the other way around, actually. Anyway, Adams' much-loved Dilbert comics have been in circulation since 89 and frequent, uh, frequently pokes jokes at office culture, but he announced he was sensationally dropped by publisher Lee Enterprises. The media company owns 100 newspapers and one of his most recent controversial comics. Okay, ba 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 ba. So anyway, he's claiming this, but I looked into the story and the paper has just cut back. The Sunday funnies, man, or the factually the weekday funnies are not doing it, of course. And so they've cut back. I imagine Dilbert cost a fortune and they also cut other uh, comic strips. So I think there's another targeted. There's another small detail. It's just not that funny anymore. It's like when it's right. like when Dennis Miller got conservative and then blamed woke culture. It's like no, but Dennis, you're not funny anymore. You're sanctimonious and you're you're pedantic and you're preachy. Nobody wants to hear that shit. And and these Dilbert car cartoons just weren't funny. Same with Ellen DeGeneres when she had her coming out episode, which was great. On her sitcom. On her sitcom. Right. And then the sitcom was canceled. And then she cried foul. But it's like, but all you did was gay storylines after that. Yeah. And this is a mass medium. There, was, there wasn't like a gay channel yet, you know, like uh, that, that or even channels that had predominantly gay, you know, like like a Bravo or something like that. Anyway. So here's one of the comics, just if you want to see the quality. Right. Uh, they're sitting at a conference table. A uh, guy is next to Dilbert and a uh, black, black gentleman. Black guy is next to Dil Dilbert. No, Dilbert's, Dilbert's the guy with the flat head. Oh, I don't even know. Oh, the egghead guy's not Dilbert. I don't give yeah. a shit. Go ahead. The guy says, management asked me to add some diversity to the engineering team. Meet Dave. And they point to a black guy. And the black guy says, I identify as white. And the other guy says, you're ruining everything, Dave. So, I don't know. Is and that... who, who's the other guy who looks like the guy, the smack your bitch up guy with the hair on each side? That's still, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. By um, the way, that... how about this? That is the oldest fucking joke or thought yeah, you can I know. have. I know. It's terrible. You wish you were getting canceled because this is provocative. It's such a tired premise to Jesus. identify as something else. Um, also, I've told the true story at CBS. The guy complained to me. Uh, he goes, you want to know what I have to go do now? They hired a director for a series. Of course, they have to check boxes, just like this Dilbert thing is talking about. It's the oldest story ever. And he goes, and get this. We have the best director, and he happens to be a black guy. It's awesome. It's a win, 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 win. And I just got called that on his DGA, Directors Guild of America, paperwork, he did not check the box identifying as African-American. So this guy, executive, had to go talk to the guy about it and ask if he would check the box. So oh, my God. There's a million real-world stories like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here is to, to remind us what a funny comic strip is. Here's Bunny Reiner, mm -hmm. and uh, she's writing the uh, Lockhorns. Leroy is eating with Loretta, and he looks at her and he goes, I'm not hard of hearing. I'm tired of hearing. <laughs> and then, great. And then the next one, he says to her, they all said we wouldn't last. Why didn't we listen? <laughs> These are good jokes. And then finally he comes home drunk with a Asian woman who looks like a geisha girl. And Loretta's got her hands on her hips, apron on, and he goes, and he's holding up a cage with a bird in it. And he goes, the bird, the bird speaks only Chinese, so I had to hire someone to translate. 
That's getting into uh, Hagger territory. Yeah, that's a little creepy. He brought a he brought an Asian hooker home, and what did he think? Just the bird was gonna let him skate on it? I mean, you're saying hooker. She is dressed like a hooker for sure. Geisha girls were hookers, right? Is she dressed like a geisha? I think so. Maybe. She has regular sized feet. That's a plus. They are delightful. They're not bound. Uh, here's here's Hagger the Horrible, who you speak right. of. Uh, Hagger is sitting with his wife, Helga, and the mother-in-law at a bar. They're drinking mead. <laughs> and then the wife says, why won't Mean Max come over and say hello to mother? Is he shy? Mean Max is sitting at the bar with his back to them. And then Mean Max turns around and, and Hagger goes, he doesn't like competition. And we see the mother-in-law's face, and it is, um, it is uh, got the same scowl on it. That Here's the problem with the cartoon. Look at the blocking. In one frame, he's sitting directly behind Hagger. And in the next frame, he's sitting behind the wife, but he hasn't moved. It's all off. It's all off. It's weird. Unless- anyway... Yeah. I mean, he's obviously going to rape the mother-in-law, <laughs> and so why why wouldn't she be angry? He's, you know, why is Helga facilitating the rape? Also, he rapes his competition. Yes. Have I mentioned that? Um, all right, then I put in a far side, and it's a dog showing up at a door, standing bipedal, it's and uh, holding flowers. And then uh, another, a female dog with a pocketbook has answered the door. And the quote underneath is, oh, Ginger, you look absolutely stunning. And whatever you rolled in sure does stink. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. That's great. I love them. Yeah. I was, I'm trying to find ones that aren't like the most popular because uh, so many people know the big ones, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, they're so funny. Okay. All right. Here's your challenge, Mike I Gibbons, not, Family I Circus. I have not looked at it. In fact, it just surprised me that it's in here. Um, here, I'm scanning down. I see the top of the dumb dad's head. It's a family circus. I'm not even going to read. Okay, I'm not going to read what it says. So here it is. Dad comes in the room. He has a can in his hand, and the little shitty boy is sitting. Billy. In the ch- his name's in Billy. The, sitting in the chair. And it's right in front of a TV showing football. So the kid's mouth is open. So I'm going to assume it's the kid saying something. And it's like, he can't say, oh, dad, you didn't have to bring me a beer. But what would the, what could the kid say? Like, um, probably some dumb misunderstanding about his chair. Like, oh, and not funny. Like, here, here. Okay, I'm going to pretend to be this comic strip. Um Oh, Dad, why don't you pull up a chair? I, uh, y- uh, your game is on. Like, mm-hmm. there. That's yeah. all it would take, right? Yeah. Oh, let's yeah. see what he wrote. Hurry up, Dad. They're having roll call. It's even worse than what I did. <laughs> well, they don't have their helmets on. So, yeah, they just, they're just taking the field. And, I mean, all I can picture is this poor dad. He's got a beer in his hand. He deals with these shitty kids all week. All he wants is three hours on a fucking Sunday to sit down and watch a football game. And this shitty kid is sitting in his chair saying unfunny things. And he's got to put up with it. What is roll call? Why would the kid, wouldn't it be something from school? Like, hurry up, Dad. They're taking attendance yeah, on the team. That would make sense. Roll call is the military. What does Billy know about the military? Uh, the dad should chug the beer and smash it into the kid's face. <laughs> Well, why am I mad at the kid? That's like being mad yeah. at Triumph. Why, why aren't I mad at the hand that created this? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's bring it home with a little Blondie. And uh, who walks into the kitchen? Blondie's standing at the, I have a guess. at the stove with an apron on, stirring a pot, which is, I mean, what fucking year is this? That, that 90% of these cartoons is her standing stirring a fucking pot. While this putz walks in with his hands in his pockets and goes, well, I'm done working on our taxes. And she goes, that was quick. And she goes, you actually figured out our taxes in 15 minutes? And then he turns his back to her and walks away and flippantly says, no, I just said I was done working on them. 
Oh, really? Hmm. How about I'm done working on this fucking marriage, Dagwood? <laughs> How about I'm done working on your soup? How about I'm done fucking cleaning this house, you lazy pe? You do nothing at work all week. You got to do one thing on the weekends, and you're going to put your hands in your pocket and turn <laughs> your back to me? That's the Fuck detail you off. Hate. Yeah. Oh. Oh, boy. Blondie. By the way, Blondie looks stay good, with too. She looks good. Does she, Greg? Yeah, look at those calves, like bowling pins. <laughs> mm. All right, listen, uh, we want to remind you guys, support our sponsor. We both ate it this week. We loved it. It's we called Factor. We legitimately ate it, it was, and it was legit good and boy easy. And uh, head to go dot factor 75.com slash papers 130 write that down it's worth get it. that discount get that discount uh also i'll see you uh on the road mike anything you want to promote uh what do i want to promote yeah i guess i the promoted cars that first guy's album ins- right the cars well i talk about the cars before but that uh that guy's instagram yeah. is and i i think he is in a wheelchair I think he he's, he's a, in guy, a wheelchair. The guy has an interesting story also. I don't know much about him yet. Maybe I'll talk about him next week also. But, oh, my God, if you look at his post, it's the cool, coolest collection of people, whether it's actors, old, like, alternative musicians, like, old school, cool uh, artists. It's very, and it's not just all old either. It's very cool. Awesome. We want to give a shout-out, as always, to Midcoast Media, Chris Denman, Beth Hoops, Key. They all do a fine job putting the show together every week, and we appreciate their efforts and their work, their professionalism. If you all guys are sudden, looking for somebody to help you with working. your social media needs or your uh, audio editing, always look to Midcoast Media, located, of course, not in the middle of any coast at all, but in St. Louis. They'll say the coast of the mighty Mississippi, but that just doesn't hold water, nope. so to speak. Oh. Also, they should be worried. There's good treme- the tremendous flooding in Canada right now. They do hold water. Uh, the and don't blame Mid Coast Media for Greg's video and his Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna get hardwired next week. It doesn't. It's so weird because I went on the internet and you know how you can check the speed of your internet. I checked mm. it and it's well above what's considered good, and yet it's well, still. You haven't. You haven't like. Uh, well, now you froze. No. You're frozen right now in this position. Oh, my God. You probably did a Wi-Fi. Yep, now you're back. I think when I move fast, it freezes. <laughs> it can tell? It's a sensor? <laughs> it gets you overwhelmed. You really understand tech, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> my laptop doesn't like sudden movements. It's, yeah. uh, it's a bit spooked, you know? It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's like a horse. It's early. It's still early for the internet. He's still waking up. Um, All right. Well, then we'll see you uh, tomorrow night, or tonight, I should say, at the uh, movie. We'll talk about it next week, the David Bowie documentary. I'm going to look into tickets because it's IMAX, Pally. Oh, I love it. Okay, good. All righty. Why don't we both and everybody take it, Aish? Take it, Aish! There it was. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Welcome to Sunday Papers. I got a show with Greg and Mike. Sunday Papers sorts it out. Sunday Papers podcast show with Greg and Mike. And it's 